Today's goal is to make something that is really easy and approachable for a beginner in this hobby, but is still really useful and enjoyable for a veteran crafter and tabletop gamer. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Last week's project was a doozy. It was very involved and pretty complicated and took a lot of time and work. So this week I wanna go back to basics and do another sort of beginner project for those of you who are just dipping your toes in the hobby. The fountain build that I previously did was really successful and it helped a lot of people. So I'm hoping this one is as well. This one will probably actually be even a little bit easier to build and likely be more universally usable for tabletop gaming. I don't know, similar. And it's a project that even a veteran crafter will enjoy doing and will get some use out of. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna keep it really simple. Basically for tooling, I'm just gonna use knives, some glue, paint, and uh, some XPS foam. That's really it. No hot wire tools today, no fancy embellishing ingredients, just the very basics. So I got here a piece of scrap XPS foam. This is inch and a half insulation foam from the hardware store, and it's gonna be the foundation for this project. My idea is to build an obelisk. Something like an obelisk is perfect scatter terrain for tabletop gaming. In a game like D&D, a creepy stone rune covered pillar in the woods, you're gonna find a use for it. If you're playing skirmish gaming, perfect scatter terrain for line of sight blocking. I think this is a really good project and I actually don't have one yet, so even better for me. I'm just gonna use my Ulfa knife. You wanna use a big bladed utility knife for a project like this. And actually you wanna have a fresh sharp blade. So I'm gonna change that quickly. First thing to do is just cut out a very rough rectangle. I wanna create a flat surface for this thing to stand on before I start carving the shape. That's gonna be standing nicely I can start cutting the shape up. It doesn't matter if it's leaning a bit, that will just add to the effect. What I do wanna do is make the top a little bit narrower than the bottom. So it kind of tapers up and is more bottom heavy. So I'm gonna start by just sort of slicing away the sides and tapering up towards the top. And then I'm gonna start kind of beveling some of the edges to make it look more like it's carved out of stone. And when doing this, you wanna sort of move your knife in a wavy pattern and once in a while, kind of flick and break away a piece. And that'll give you a nice ripped chunk of stone. You wanna to try to avoid leaving bits like this where it looks like a rip. This sort of stuff doesn't really look good once it's finished. So try to cut that stuff away in a, in a stone-like pattern. I don't know. And I know there's already some soft boys in the audience that are freaking out because I'm using a knife next to my hands. Just be in control of what you're doing. Take your time, go slow, you'll be fine. You should be very aware of your own ability with a knife and assessing the risk if you were to cut yourself doing whatever you're doing. Depending on how old you want this thing to look, you're gonna wanna do more or less of these kind of chunks coming out of it. Stone monolith, painted up, done. But I think we're gonna add some carvings to it to make it look more interesting. There's a lot of ways you can go about carving details into foam. One way is to use an X-Acto knife and carve in the shape and then go back in with a pen or a pencil to deepen that sort of groove. You can use a fine tipped Sharpie marker and draw it in and that will slightly melt it. Or you can just use a pen or a sharp pencil and just do that directly.
I'm just gonna go through and carve in some lines to look like some kind of ancient language. I'm gonna keep all the shapes very simple and straight. That way the carving doesn't rip the foam as much. If you're very artistically inclined and good at illustration, you could do all sorts of designs and maybe something like knot work or images. It all comes down to what you are comfortable doing. I'm a crap illustrator, so I'm just gonna do a bunch of lines that will hopefully look like runes. And I kinda want it to look like this thing was maybe at one time completely covered in them, but parts of it is chipped away. So on any flat areas, that may be the original sides of this thing, I'm gonna add these details. And just to give it a little bit more texture, I'm gonna use my aluminum foil ball to roll over and cause some indentation. You can use a stone for this, some jagged rock, whatever, just something to give it a bit of texture. And really, that's it. A couple minutes later and we're ready for paint. One thing you might wanna do is attach this to a base that you can decorate so it stands nicely. I'm not a big fan of bases, so instead what I'm gonna do is try to make this bottom heavier so that it naturally stands up. If you wanna add some weight to the bottom of foam pieces, there's a bunch of ways you can do that that essentially just boil down to putting something heavy in the bottom. One way is you can cut slits and then push in coins or washers or something like that, maybe some bolts, that sort of thing. I like to use the heftiest small screws I can find, these actual little leg bolts. They got a lot of weight to them and a nice heavy end that adds a lot of weight right to the bottom. And the nice thing about it is that you can just screw them right into the foam. You don't have to carve anything out, you just have to screw them in. Just gotta make sure that everything is recessed into the bottom of the foam, and then you got yourself a nicely weighted piece that won't easily knock over. You can totally just leave this as is and move on to painting, but if you wanna add a little bit more protection to the bottom, there's a really simple way you can do that. Construction paper and a bit of hot glue. Push it down onto the paper really firm. Let it cool for a second, then cut away the excess paper. This will hide whatever you put in the bottom for weight and give a bit of a hard edge that will protect the foam a little bit from denting. Now before painting this, you do wanna add some sort of protection to it to make it a little bit more durable. And I, as usual, will use my Mod Podge mixed with black paint. If you're just starting out or you have a hard time finding this stuff, you can just use watered down PVA. Mod Podge is a bit better, but PVA glue will work. You just wanna put on a thin coat because you don't wanna to totally lose all the little carving of the runes or letters or whatever you did. And the Mod Podge can have a tendency to fill those up when they're really, really small. So just take your time, apply it thin, and make sure you work the piece so there's no excess building up anywhere on it. It's time to paint this bad boy and I'm gonna keep it hella simple. I'm only gonna use these three colors, a kind of darker tan, a light tan, and an off-white. You could also go the route of doing like a medium gray, a light gray, and then an off-white, but I personally find that the beiges look a little bit more realistic on stone than neutral grays. I'm gonna start with a base coat of this light taupe. It's basically just a medium beige. It doesn't really matter exactly what color or brand of paint it is. Any kind of really light beigey brown will do just fine, or go with a gray, it's up to you. Just like the Mod Podge coating, you wanna make sure that you don't goop this on too heavily and end up filling in your little carved details. Now the slowest part of this build is actually waiting for this base coat to dry before moving on to the next step of dry brushing. 
But I actually suggest you make several of these at the same time. One, because having several of them is gonna be more useful on the table. And also, if you have a bunch of them, by the time you paint them all, you can go back to the first one and it'll be dry to keep going and you can do it sort of assembly line style. Now that the base coat is dry, we can move on to doing the dry brushing of the next lighter shade of tan or gray, depending on what you're doing. This concept is very simple for those of you just starting out who don't know. It's one of the most important things in painting tabletop terrain. And it's essentially the practice of brushing on very, very, very light, dry bits of paint. So you wanna load your brush up with the paint and wipe basically all of it off on a paper towel, and then just go through and go over your piece. And with the minimal amount of paint on your brush, this will make it so it only highlights the highest points. I like using these big fluffy makeup brushes. I buy them at the dollar store. They're super cheap and perfect for this use. This is the fastest and simplest way to add dimension to the paint job of a bit of terrain. And as a new crafter, it's one of the most satisfying things to learn to do. Doesn't take any real skill, just a tiny bit of practice. Then you can go in with an off-white and do it again but this time be a little bit more sparing. Don't wash your brush in between, just use the same brush, wipe it off on the same paper towel. This creates a nice transitionary color. This time, go a little bit more lightly. Just try to get the highest points. And that's it. You just gotta let this dry completely before moving on to the wash. If you want the root of using actual grays instead of beiges, you can usually just leave this as is and it looks pretty good. But when you're doing beiges, it's the beige mixed with the black wash that I'm gonna do in a minute that really gives it that nice stony look. And if you've noticed that some of these shapes that you've carved in have started to sort of disappear, you can always go back in and deepen them a little bit more with your pencil. Now it's time to apply the wash. And this is something that you really should not be intimidated by as a new tabletop crafter. This is a crucial part of the hobby and it makes very basic pieces look way, way better. It can be a little intimidating to coat something you just made and painted in a black ink and it's kind of scary, but it shouldn't be. Put it on, let it dry, learn how it reacts, trust it and over time it will be your favorite thing. Wash is very simple. It's just very, very, very diluted paint or ink with a little bit of a flow aid. You can make the most rudimentary version of a wash by mixing water, black paint, and a drop of dish soap, or you can make a slightly better version with some other ingredients. I will link up there to my video of my improved wash recipe. It's still pretty darn simple. My favorite way to apply it is with a dropper bottle and kind of just squeeze it right onto the piece and then brush it over everything. I know a lot of people get intimidated by this step, but trust me, after doing it for a while, it becomes no big deal. And keep in mind, if you don't like the way it looks after the wash, you can just repaint it just paint. It's just paint. The important thing is to let the piece sit and allow the wash to drip down, let gravity do its thing. If you get any big puddles where it's gathering a lot of wash, you can just take your brush and sort of dab it away. If you're new to the process, it's a good idea to keep an eye on this thing for a couple minutes as the wash settles. Then after that, you can just walk away and let it dry. Now you may be looking at it and going, hmm, this is, I don't like how this looks. It's really splotchy and dark and all the highlights are gone. Well, good news. If you don't like the way it looks after the wash, that's okay because you can now go back in and do another light dry brushing. Just take your lighter shade of gray or tan or whatever you're doing and give it another dry brush. This time around though, you wanna really make sure you got 
almost all the excess paint off your brush and you don't want to go too crazy here. And this will bring back all the highlights, leaving the deepest recesses still nice and dark. It only takes a couple seconds to go through and do a piece like this. Simple as that. And if you want to take it a little bit further, you can go in with more of your white and do it again. But again, be very cautious here and don't overdo it. Make sure you really, really clean this brush off because you don't want streaky lines of paint on this if you can avoid it. And that's that, you're done. A simple obelisk complete. This is such a perfect project for a beginner because it's easy and forgiving it's fast and you can make a whole bunch of these and use them to try out different techniques. Make a couple, make one that's gray, one that's beige, try different colors of dry brushing, try different wash mixtures, whatever. Just use these as your prototypes and at the end you will have a whole bunch of them that you can just drop on the table and decorate a game. I mean, a dozen of these on the table in the woods would create a really cool encounter in something like Dungeons and Dragons. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it useful and inspiring and I hope it motivates you to just try. Just try, you don't need much. Knife, foam, some paint. Keep it simple and you can build off it in the future. If you liked the video, of course, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section below. And if you wanna go out and pick up any tools or supplies for your hobby, I mean, start out, I suggest just going to the dollar store, grabbing a few things. But when you want to build on that and get more things to do more elaborate stuff, check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store with links to pretty much all of the stuff that I use and recommend. The stuff that I use regularly, grab it there, get the right things, read a little bit about why I use each of them. If you enjoy these videos that I make every week, more importantly, if you get a lot of value out of the videos that I make every week and you wanna help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. It's through the generous support of viewers there that I'm able to dedicate so much time and effort into this channel and these videos. So if they help you, help me and, uh, yeah, it's a great union. Join the fellowship today. You get access to my private Facebook group, my Discord server. You get videos a few days early. All that good stuff. That's it for this week, guys. I will see you again next week. Cheers. Cheers.